Oh, yeah, no, I don't have your ID. I would think so, maybe even your phone. Oh, they're fine. Okay. Tuna District is connected. Okay. Oh, Aaron's here remotely. She doesn't see you yet. <laughs> okay, it is 531. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. And we'll start with the land acknowledgement. As we gather today, we acknowledge that Eureka, California is ancestral territory of the Wiat people. We honor all indigenous people, territories, and sovereign governments that share sovereign governance within Humboldt County, California. We gather with respect and gratitude to these indigenous people. We thank and honor the indigenous caretakers of this land who continue to cherish and protect it. Their elders have instructed the young to consider the seven generations ahead as they, can, as they continue to protect the rights of the land and all people who live on it. We encourage all to align with and follow the lead of local indigenous communities as they steward the land and protect all of its natural resources. We'll have a moment of silence. Okay, uh, we'll have the roll call. Okay. Carol. Here. Here. Present. And Bird is excused. Yes. Jim. Here. Present. Larry. Yeah. Present. Lance. Here. Present. Uh, Nazanin. Uh, excused or absent? I, I don't know. Okay. Absent. Absent. Um, Jamie. I would put her down as absent for now. Okay. And I am present. And then um, Guy, present. Um, Aaron, I see you on Zoom. Holly, Spirit. present. Richard, present. Lisa, absent. Absent. Okay. And uh, we do have a form. Okay. Great. Thank you. Item number three is a judge agenda adjustments. Are there any any reason why we need to change the order of anything on the agenda today? Seeing none, we'll move to item four, which is the approval of the minutes of the May 2nd meeting. Any changes beyond what uh, you've been given? We've had about three people asking uh, for your edits. Without bird, how can we? <laughs> We're going to have to function without work tonight. <laughs> she did. Of course, found without three. No good. <laughs> magical. Well, seeing no uh, offering of changes, we'll approve the minutes as presented then. And next item would be item five, the treasurer's report. Uh, short and sweet. Uh, current bank balance is, uh, I actually sent it to everybody. Uh, 61492, that's as of today. Uh, county balance, I believe, because I haven't asked uh, Mr. Goble for an update, but at least based on the figures I have, is 4,549 and 86 cents. Okay. Any questions on the treasurer's report? Oh, can I just add one? Oh, yeah. I don't know if I did that last time or not. I think I did, but just in case I didn't, uh, we got rid of our debit card. I think you did. But in case I didn't, that's fine. Yeah. We don't use it. <laughs> and do we have to give the $4,500 back if we don't spend it? It's already carried over for 10 years. So, so, it's, so it's, it's, I can keep carrying. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're not going to mention it to the county. <laughs> <laughs> It's so rare that we have any money at all. Well, I know. I thought <laughs> of, I mean, we've never had that. <laughs> and my apologies to Lance. I will find you a name one of these days. So, no, <laughs> <laughs> right. I guess it doesn't matter. Whichever you feel like. <laughs> oh, okay. I won't. Uh, we do not have a guest speaker 
this evening. So um, we'll skip that item. Now we have public comment now on non-agenda items. So, oh, oh there's another person or two, two, three. No, nope, just one more. At the ball. The camera angles are terrible. Right, so where can I so if you want to scoot your chair over here where we can all see you, okay. that, that'll work. Right. So public comment on the non-agenda item is three minutes. Correct. And we'll be happy to listen to what you have to say. So my name is Park Bostrom. I live in Eureka. I'm here because I'm concerned about a flag that is being displayed in the window of this building. Well, apparently the window belongs to the district attorney's office. And apparently one of the employees in the district attorney's office has put the flag in the window. It's a foreign flag. Um, apparently it may violate county policy, but the district attorney is not enforcing that policy. Uh, I, I'm working with Janet Townsend, who just, uh, Townsend Bettis, who just joined the meeting, um, uh, trying to get the flag taken down. And at present we're working on a resolution of censure, censuring the district attorney and the employee who some people believe is the employee who is displaying the flag. So I've circulated paper copies of that resolution here. I'm not really asking the Human Rights Commission to do anything, but you as individual members, if you are concerned about this flag, it might be helpful if you would share your concerns with one or more of the county supervisors. Uh, we have a meeting with Supervisor Aurelio on June 17th. Um, and I recognize that free speech is not directly one of the issues, it is your purview, but there are some related issues to this flag being displayed, an, an issue of discrimination because only one person is being allowed to display a flag in the county courthouse windows and other people are not, and people who are not employees of the county are certainly not able to display flags. And there was also a protest at Cal Poly Humboldt that is related to the flag, and I noticed that that protest were issues related to it are on your agenda today. Uh, if any of you are interested in communicating with me, my email address is on page four of, of the Resolution Center. I'd be happy to hear your comments, suggestions for improving it, or alternative methods of going about uh, trying to get this flag taken down. That's all I have. So thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. We don't normally re respond or react to individual comments. I will wait until the end of the meeting. And yeah. Okay. And that'd be fine. I'll be here. Okay. That's the public comment from inside the room, but oh, we have another person with their hand up. Uh, you are allowed three minutes to speak on a non-agenda item. Uh, I recognize Shannon Townsend. Hi there, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, great, hi. Yes, uh, Shannon Townsend Bettis. I live here in Eureka and I am uh, of the same uh, voice as Park on this subject. Um, the foreign flag in the county window has been a concern of mine since December, and I have submit a complaint, a formal complaint to the uh, Human Resources Office um, in, I believe it was March, and I've been in communication with them. They have been very responsive, um, but the flag still remains to this day. And um, I have actually, you know, in all transparency, written several articles about this, uh, letters to the editor, to Redheaded Black Belt. They have printed two of my letters. They have gone directly to the district attorney. Um, I've clearly laid out my concern about the perception of bias and non-neutrality, um, in addition to, uh, as Park brought up, the free speech issues that that flag brings up. And is my understanding that the, the county... Uh, has a policy that uh, strictly forbids uh, political activities by uh, employees um, on the premises of the county government building. This is a government building that um, does people do a lot of business at. Um, it's recorder's office. There's the assessors. There's also, you know, our judicial uh, processes take place there. Um, it's, it's important that these institutions remain neutral on these issues, especially during these times that are very, very, uh, uh, contentious right now. Park brought up that there were some protests that occurred at Humboldt State or, Cal, excuse me, Cal Poly Humboldt, previous alumni. And, um, they are now being tried through that office where, uh, I have discovered, confirmed through Public Records Act request that the flag is, um, being displayed. So I just, as a you know, community member along with Park, I wanted to just express my concerns about that, and um, and hopefully we can get that flag taken down somehow, some way. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Any other public comment? Okay. All right, well, as I said, we can't comment directly on non-agenda items, but we appreciate your input and uh, we'll do some research. Now, public comment on, I just want to read this because we have made a change in how we handle public comment as a result of our last meeting. Um, public comment on agenda items. Public members of the public will be allowed to speak on agenda items once during discussion at, at the end of commissioner comments and prior to any action or vote by the commission. In the event of hateful, threatening, or unnecessarily negative comments, the chair will admonish one or all common commenters that they may be muted if they persist in such actions. Time to speak will be closely monitored, three minutes per person. As I read before, the commission may not act on an item that does not appear on the agenda. The public will be allowed to address agenda items uh, as I've spelled out. Okay, item number nine. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Larry. Oh. Uh, forgive me, but I, can we ask questions uh, when people come with things? I mean, I, actually, I don't know. actually, no. Yeah, it, it's the Brown Act. I, 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 uh, I, I think given what, what we have on the agenda, we might have an opportunity to ask relevant questions later on. Yes, sir. Just one other thought. Uh, what you just read, the statement you read, is that from county council, or is that something? I ran the by county council, okay. and that's why all of the uh, people that are online, two at the moment, of uh, three, um, they are uh, muted until they speak, and they can be muted again if they're speaking inappropriately. Okay. Uh, that okay. hasn't happened tonight, but so you th this is uh, replicated from the board of supervisors. That I didn't say it's replicated, but it's it, it was uh, it's a similar process. So this is new. Yes, it's great. Yeah, since our last meeting. Yes, it was kind of a job unwieldy since the last the time we got together. All right, Commission communications. I don't have any new ones. Uh, does anybody here have any? Commission of Communications they wish to share. Yes, sir. I don't know where to do this, but it seems uh, appropriate. Uh, this is my last uh, commission meeting. I will, uh, by next month, be moving to Washington, D.C. Congratulations. So I uh, I really, you know, thumbs up to you guys, the tough gig, very important one. And I was glad to be here, however shortly I was the second time. So we've had some interesting debates. <laughs> and I'm sure we will continue to live in interesting times. <laughs> and I want to appreciate you guys for listening to me, even when I get a little, you know, testy. That's our loss. So <laughs> thanks, y'all. Thank you very much for your time. I don't need to stay for the rest of it. Hey, just a second, Lance. Last, uh, can you share what brings you to Washington? Uh, I have family that lives there, uh -huh. and uh, it was a really, well, as Jim knows, it's been a very difficult decision for me uh, to stay here and go. And I, I ended up uh, relegated to logic, and logic <laughs> said, Every time I debated this inside my head, it said, you're 75, you got maybe five years left. Where do you want to spend it? And I said to myself, I want to spend it with my uh, grandchildren, kind of, what are they, grand nephews and nieces? 
who are little bitty, and I've never been around little bitty people. So this is going to be a learning experience for me. <laughs> but I love them dearly. I love my brother. And I absolutely love, I think, the greatest city on earth. I think Washington, D.C. is a Disneyland for a guy like me. <laughs> it is. You know, politics and I'll be in front of the White House, no matter who's in it, uh, you know, doing my thing. Yeah, so get around. When I see something, I say something. You know, it's a flaw. <laughs> we'll watch for you on the evening news. Huh? We'll watch for you on the evening news. Oh, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of folks that will, depending upon the outcome. <laughs> we'll see. Lance, thank you just for your contributions to our... What's that? Thank you for your contributions to the speech committee and really for all the ideas that you presented. And You're very welcome. Thank you all. Yeah. I, I hope we have at least one more movie before you leave. Well, give me a call. I will. <laughs> thank you. All right, everybody. All right, thank care. you so much. And it's been great uh, breaking bread with you. All right. Take care. Keep in touch. So when we go to DC, we'll catch you. The name of the uh, lady that runs the uh, Boys and Girls Club. That runs what? The Boys and Girls Club. Oh, Monica Rose. Isn't that a great name, Monica Rose? <laughs> She's terrific. You'll you'll love her, and and I think the kids would be really excited to help out with whatever it is yeah. you guys have in mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take care, Lance. Thank you. Okay, on your uh, chair notes, um, just mentioned, although we weren't able to meet because Nazanin uh, still has a stiff neck, it looks like. Oh, don't say that. Oh, well, I mean, you, you turned your head slowly, so I didn't know. Anyway, we're working on reactivating the Facebook page, and uh, I trust we'll have something to report to you before your, our next meeting. And uh, and a reminder that we'll be voting later on in, in the meeting uh, for officers starting the new term in July. Uh, item C, Correctional Facilities Liaison Report. Pretty quiet this time around. I think we have three uh, folks, uh, Ellen, uh, I've got uh, through the female uh, inmate uh, and, uh, and Bryce. Uh, they are ladies on back together and got their issues uh, uh, taken care of. Uh, we had uh, another gentleman that had issues with uh, having a lack of uh, writing materials. I spoke with Bryce about that. She explained what how that process was, and apparently he had not to this statement. The process that was in, in place. And the third one was uh, kind of a, a, I think it came to two of the commissioners in front, uh, two phone calls, but it was concerning uh, uh, inmates that was uh, alleging sexual um, sexual uh, harassment and uh, lack of, uh, actually, it was a sexual harassment. Would be, I don't know if you can find it, but it was a sexual confrontation of some form. And uh, also that he had was alleging that his grievances were not being responded to. Uh, again, uh, you know, our 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 go-to is, is our liaison Bryce, and she was said she was right on it. She had alerted that the, the appropriate sergeants about the issues and uh, He's looking into it. I haven't gotten any kind of feedback from our guests, but uh, I'll keep on top of that. Any, any questions for Larry? Okay, thank you, Larry. Uh, message line. Oh, oh, oh I'm, sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry, I was a little slow. That's all right. This is embarrassing. Uh, most of you met my daughter a couple of months ago. She came with me, and then uh, our situation changed, and uh, it's it's a tra it's an ongoing Hello County tragedy, which is not unusual. The only reason I'm bringing it up in correctional facility, and this is embarrassing for me. Uh, Tuesday morning, I went. I had gone to the Board of Supervisors budget hearing Monday afternoon and was exhausted when I got home and didn't check my mail. 
Tuesday morning when I went out to get my newspaper, I checked the mail. There was a letter from my daughter. She had been in jail again. And it took me 20 minutes. I finally had to call 211 to get the number for the Humboldt County Correctional Facility. So I'm only asking as a courtesy to us who are old and feeble and, you know, when getting a letter from a loved one in jail is traumatic, even if it's almost routine, but we really ought to have the direct line to the Humboldt County Correctional Facility our- Do you guys know that Jews like that bearded tranny in the background did 9-11? Yeah, what the fuck even is that, bro? That's not going to be allowed. Uh, you- how about we disallow Jews from entering our country? Hey, Aaron, how about you jump in a volcano, faggot? We're going to uh, delete or mute. Yeah, come it. on, zipper tits. Let's delete niggers and kikes and beaners and zipper tits. <laughs> Oh, thank you, you know for that, the unmute. Heil Hitler. You know that rabbis are molesting babies? They're dying of herpes. Take a look at that. Rabbis sucking. Oh, God. Why are rabbis allowed to suck baby penis? Isn't Why that, is that you know, rabbi sucking that baby's penis? Aaron, did a rabbi suck your penis? Thank you again for the unmute. Niggers aren't even people. Why is that bearded fucking monstrosity, that mams are in the background, what? allowed in the what the fuck is that? Terrifying. That is that a boomer. Look at that. That boomer's just sitting there. He, he's acting like this is more appalling than that thing sitting next to him. That's because that Bill. boomer has a nigger. Bill, you got nigger grandkids? Bill the Boomer. Blink.
and not judge. And then in the end, can you hear us, Aaron? At least everybody okay. needed to. I always think. Let me just check on this one over here. I want to turn now. In the process of trying to control some uh, inappropriate behavior, muted ourselves. So uh, we're back online now. Thank you. Any other comments for for Rick and, and his concern? So, so I assume I've got my quota for the for I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, Aaron, you're up on the 16th through the end of the month for phones. Okay. Good enough. And then we're looking for volunteers for the July 1st through the 15th, 16th through the 31st, August 1st through the 15th, and okay. 16th. Oh, go ahead. Which one? Is I can take August 1st through the 15th. Okay. I'm taking the app, the second part of August. Okay, Larry. I'll take the 16th through the 31st of June, or July, excuse me. That leaves July 1st through the 15th. I'll take it. Okay. I need to get two. <laughs> we'll be caught up for a little while. Just a note, I think we only muted shortly. I was playing around with the controls to try. And I don't think it was very long. I just happened to notice yeah. the symbol, and I yeah. thought, oh, well, I tried to get it so they can't, participants can't unmute themselves. We have to unmute them right. if they want to speak. Right. I think that's set now, so we don't yeah. get anybody laughing without permission. I have a feeling it was the same group of people yeah. as last yeah. month. Yeah, I think so. Certainly some overlap in conversation. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, understanding committee reports. The Sanctuary Committee. Any committee report? Uh, the only thing I have, and uh, I think, again, I think I mentioned last time I talked to uh, Fernando Paz, and uh, he's got a group right now. Uh, they've shifted his, his role on the campus, and he's now doing a program called SAGE which uh, is Student Advisory Group for Equity. And we were talking about some kind of an auxiliary group that maybe uh, could actually participate here with the Human Rights Commission as well, whether at our monthly meetings or at least occasionally. And uh, I could be with him probably, you know, once school starts back up again, because things are, I mean, his office was in Siemens Hall, so he was locked out through somebody they're about so we'll see how it goes when does cal poly resume uh we well, usually the third week of august is when classes start second week is when the campus opens and of course it is now open officially do you think he would be interested in being a guest speaker you know at I'll, I'll ask him sure okay. present august as an option okay that would be just before school begins again okay Uh, ad hoc committee reports cultural awareness indigenous people. Nothing to report. Free speech. Actually, this has been retitled uh, "Hate Crimes Versus Free Speech." Hate crimes. Uh, same, same basic <laughs> committee. Right. So, uh, Rick. So we met uh, on May thirty first. Uh, we had a number of people who, besides myself. And Bird, uh, Larry was there, Jim was there, and uh, also Molly Kane from the League of Women Voters. We also had uh, Cerberus Patterson, who's uh, from, uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> from the LGBTQ community. Uh, we had um, <coughs> Malik uh, Dalyal, who is from the Youth Human Rights Commission, Mary Galinas, who is um, Basically, a professional who works with uh, helping people communicate under stressful and <laughs> difficult situations. Uh, we also had Ted Hernandez from the WIAT, and uh, then we had Corazon, who also um, talked about the people's action technique called heat canvassing. 
And it was a meeting from which we did not come out with a concrete new direction that we want to take, but we really got a lot of insight and gained, I think, a lot of good information on some of the really key professionals in the community and how they saw um, <clears throat> valuable ways to approach this whole issue. Uh, the topic also came up, uh, I think, based on, um, <clears throat> on, uh, on a wider suggestion that maybe that the committee <clears throat> or even other committee in the commission could address ways to de-escalate confrontational situations on any issues that do occur in the community. Um, and I don't know if you want to add more about that, Jim, and about your conversation with Natalie, but. Uh, that'll come up later in okay. the right. finished business. Okay, all right. So we are going to be meeting again a little bit later this month. I did bring my calendar. I think it's on the 19th or something like that. Um, and we will have a few more community representatives and then from there, I think that we will want to uh, explore further in what concrete directions we want to take. 21st. Thank you. Five o'clock. Is that five? Yes, five o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So any questions? No, I just have a com comment. Um, the committee members? Um, well, Do you want to add another one to that one? Yes. Are you volunteering? Uh, when's the next meeting? The 21st. Oh, the 21st at 5 o'clock. Oh, okay. Where? Okay. It's a strange problem. Okay, great. Excellent. Thank you, Carol. Very good. Oh, should you get a Zoom link? Or, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll share the Zoom oh, link with you so you know okay. how to get in. Hey, thank you, Rick. No, thank you, thank you, Carol. Appreciate it. Uh, the next committee would be homelessness, behavioral health. Not there. Nothing to report. And unfortunately, Jamie isn't here, so I'll try to regroup um, on the Youth Human Rights Commission, which is being developed at College of the Redwoods, and will also be extending to. Cal Poly, uh, so we can get people in the age group of 14 to 22 years of age. You mentioned two people that were at the hate speed, hate crimes versus free speech uh, meeting. Uh, there were two people involved from the youth group. Well, Malik was there. Um, oh, the, yeah, it was, Lachlan was not there. Yeah, Malik was there, but not, but not Lachlan, you're correct. And uh, I, all I can say there is that they are working at a really good pace. They think they'll be completely up and running for the school year beginning in whatever their term starts. But they're going to meet all summer long on Zoom. They've already adopted one of their pet projects, which is to make access to student, uh, to educational facilities uh, much easier for students. Basically, addressing uh, transportation issues, um, mm -hmm. um, which in their minds uh, should be free for students. Now, they'll make their proposal. They'll, mm -hmm. and uh, that come fall, I'm hoping that we'll have a regular representative of their group participating in, as a liaison, such as Larry does with the jails, mm -hmm. just so we can understand what younger people are concerned about. They may not be the same issues that we are concerned with. That they probably aren't. So anyway, I, I think it's going to be a, a very worthwhile effort. Uh, I, I think I asked this at the last meeting, but uh, this is under unfinished business. And I uh, wanted to know who for sure might need a ride to the Southern Humboldt Pride event. Anybody? Okay. And what date is that? It's the 22nd of June. That's at the Mateel Center in in Rome. Mm -hmm. We do have a flyer for the 
Oh, okay. We might be able to put that on our Facebook page. Well, that's that's on mental health. Okay. What is that? Is that the wrong one? That's the wrong one for, for this issue. Doesn't mean we can't use it. Okay. Um. Okay, no, this, I'm sorry. I, just, I did want to bring up, since we've been talking about it, uh, I'd like to create a new two-person ad hoc committee on technology because we're going to be trying to improve our presence. Uh, and if there's no objection, I would like to have Mazanin be the chair. And I would be secondary person on that committee uh, to oversee Facebook development and web page content. Sazneen had to step away, so um, I'd like an ending date of 12-31-24 as the uh, initial end date. So I would entertain a motion to so moved. establish. Okay, is there a second? It's moved, moved and seconded to establish this ad hoc committee. Uh, is there any discussion? Sounds like something that will be a nice contribution to what we're doing. I think so too. Well, assuming there's no further discussion, uh, all those in favor indicate by raising your hand. It's unanimous. Okay. Now, under the new business. Yes. Uh, last month, there was some discussion about a form that the Arcata Police Department has that was very um, perceptive about, it was a fill in the blanks form, but it was really geared toward the issues that we care about. I'd, I'd seen a copy of it and I was very impressed. Did we? Did we decide not to pursue that for some reason? I I, I don't know. I, I technology is not my thing. I'm sh not sure what we were going to pursue. Uh, someone had, someone else had seen the form. I, 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 let's put it on the agenda for next month, and I'll be sure to bring the form. Okay. Because um, getting the immediate reaction when there's a law enforcement. Person interaction is so critically important for what our mission is. Well, if you'll bring that information with you, then we'll definitely give it some time. Next. Okay, put it on the agenda. Yes, yeah, I did. Okay. Yes, sir. Is it possible to maybe get the form earlier to where like the PDF could be? I uh, sent out. Yeah, so yeah, we can I know you do everything by mail. If you I'm, if you'll mail it to me, I will. I'll make sure that it gets yeah, copied yeah, and shared. Right. Uh, I I know I have it somewhere, but if I can't, I'll go over to Arcade and get it because it, it, this is really really important. Or maybe so they can good. send it to you. Yeah, or to you. <laughs> or to me. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you arrange, we'll we'll make it work. Sorry, I was just relying on my memory, and that's. Uh, pretty can be dangerous yeah, already on this. Yeah. All right. Uh, going back to something that Rick was talking about under new business, uh, it is basically to, it's a suggestion from Natalie Arroyo, uh, supervisor, to either spearhead or become a, uh, a monitoring group that could attempt to intervene in situations like the protests at, at Cal Poly or any other university and to see, to, to try to disengage people from um, their animosities toward each other and, their, and get them so they're talking to each other and not at each other. And I don't know if you want to create an ad hoc committee or even a standing committee uh, to, to look into how we might be able to do that. Larry? You know, um, during the timber wars, uh, uh, we, uh, the Human Rights Commission, uh, formed what they called neutral observers. 
uh, and that uh, actually morphed in, uh, morphed uh, into uh, independent observers after because it, you know it, it was we were exceeding our 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 authority by uh, adopting that role. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because in those kind of mercurial kind of situations, um, having someone that is there that has no role to play except to be an observer of the events, both sides, you know, can, you know, it's, it tends to mediate some of that, that angst uh, quite effectively. Yeah. And people know that, you know, there's somebody, you know, that's watching and reporting. And I'm just saying that something like that, it sounds like, where you're going with this or where you want to go with it? I, I don't know where we want to go with it for sure, except uh, it be, it came out of the discussion of hate crimes versus free speech. And I thought, well, maybe this is a slightly different role because it's very specific to confrontations, not just what we might run into here or in public. So do you have any background information on during the timber wars, how that all played out? Sure. Uh, uh, I can, yeah, we had, you know, that, uh, you know, they were created, there were a little card that were provided to the, you know, the, the different sides of the confrontation to explain what we were and uh, what we were, you know, what we were, you know our purpose there. And, uh, and like to say, again, it was a pretty significant mediating influence uh, um, on on the on those kind of situations, it's, you know, it, I would think anything beyond that, and in, in a situation where you would at, attempt to uh, mediate, uh, would be very, very, very difficult to do, uh, just because of the the nature of those kind of confrontations uh, and the anger and the emotions are such that you know that it would be I would think personally. Very difficult to intervene. I know people are trained in that role, but you know, for us to do that, uh, I, you know, I'd be a little worried. Would you like it to be discussed in more detail at the next meeting? If sure, you could provide. I, I, I mean, it's, a, it, it's like I say, you know, at, at least from the standpoint of you know, mediating behavior, uh, you know, what I, you know, that observer kind of concept. Does in fact work. Yeah. The timber wars are essentially part of our history, but the, the concept isn't too isn't too different from what we're facing now. Well, yeah, but again, it's that it's the same kind of right. The tension is there. Yeah. yeah. And then I was actually going to bring up the same uh, issue because Larry and I were on the on the youthful observance in Denver. And a key thing that I think Larry did that was very helpful is that we would record. And if there was any kind of difficulty, we were just recording. We were not saying anything to anybody or, or cut it out or anything like that, but they just knew it was being recorded. We also were identified a tree that we had a little neutral observer ads and I think like a vest so people knew who we were. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> it just really seemed to, as Larry was saying, slow things down. And I agree with Larry, I think it would be hard for us to mediate in some way. Uh, without professional training, but I think just having someone there observing and even recording often seemed to really slow some of the little bitterness and hatefulness down to you know maybe yelling, but not not much more. Yes, sir. Just to know, um, I think it's a good idea. Uh, I just want want to make sure because you you did mention you know the current events over at the campus. Uh, we did have neutral observers. They were trained. Uh, they weren't very effective in changing anything. Uh, I don't know whether I'm, I'm speaking. It's uh, libelous at this point. There's no slanderous, I guess, because I'm speaking publicly. But uh, the administration, probably by the second day, was not interested in a negotiated settlement. Uh, seems pretty obvious from some of the emails I have. I was there every day until I was essentially banned, told that if I showed up, they would arrest me for being there. So the last time I was there was Saturday noon, and they basically said, you show up again and we'll arrest you. They, you know, they had already made the decisions uh, 
So I don't know how much we'll be able to do as an organization. I, I think it's a good idea, but again, it's just like some of the other things we do. We don't really have any, you know, total on it. All we can do is you know, light a fire under our supervisors, and all they do is they make statements, but that's about it. So, you know. Jim, if I could just respond to that. I think that with the neutral observers, we did have some training in terms of how to do it. And I think and kind of that longer term training, the science will be better than something is put together quickly, you know, of neutral observers. And the intention is that you want to come in educated in terms of what you're doing and what's most effective. And that was something that we had, I think, a fairly good program on. I mean, to do this well, we take some work. It's not just something that we would show up and record. It really helps to have people, you know, like Barry Galenas or others, who are able to kind of help fully prepare uh, a group to function. And to and you learn as you go along too. There are some things that work, some that don't. And just as you get experience, you really become more effective at what you're doing. The county actually gave the command of uh, from the Human Rights Commission, I think, was back then quite a big chunk of uh, I gave. They gave us seven hundred dollars to uh, uh, number one to go out, you know, to create a uh, independent observer program, not specifically tied to the county because they were worried about the liability issues. But, but they gave us seven hundred dollars to hire. Uh, a trainer uh, who we got from uh, the origin. Uh, uh, we really meet very confidently with him and gave us some really valuable, and I think it was one just a wooden day workshop, but it was, uh, it was really a really good thing. And, and that will be the, you know, anyway, that's how it has to happen. Yeah. Well, you do what you want to do it, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I wasn't around at that time, and uh, I'm just curious as to. Um, how did you, in what situations did you use your, in, your observing? Well, uh, anything, there were protests, actually, what's the tree, the tree, tree centers? And yeah, tree centers for the, uh, you know, a whole, you know, a whole group of uh, young folks, uh, you know, around a tree, uh, they have, you know, there was somebody up the tree that the timber company would send in, they had this, uh, Incredible. I mean, I don't know how he did it, but uh, this climber that would go up these trees with it, uh, this tree sitters, 100, you know, 150 feet up in the air and, and get them off that tree. Well, and there was, you know, the big, big, you know, confrontations between the loggers and the truck drivers and the, you know, the, the people that were trying to protect these beautiful old trees. And, uh, it, you know, I, I, and it wasn't just that. I believe that uh, there were some issues with uh, gay rights issues and parades and things where there, mm -hmm. there were some tensions that that we would attest. And, 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 and what we would do was also we would, you know, tell the you know the cops, county, the sheriff, or the city, you know, our intentions. That, you know, the new drugs or we are going to be at. Yeah, and, and that I think also helped uh, helped us in our credibility with, with some I can't I can't help but remember I think one of my classmates, which puts it back a few years, uh, was one of those tree setters. <laughs> hey, yeah, I mean it was uh, it was quite I was just amazed that nobody really got hurt because of no wait a minute, Gypsy. There was a young man from oh the Gypsy uh, yeah. Jane. Yeah, not, yeah, but that wasn't at a protest. That was he was in the woods and right. got killed by a tree falling on him. Right. Okay, before we digress too far, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Part? You you started to raise your hand at one point. Rick already covered everything I was going to say. I, I have memories of the independent observer program. So oh, okay. okay. It's already been discussed. All right. Thank you. Uh, well, I, I think we'll add that to the agenda, perhaps with some any information you can provide yeah. material wise yeah. that may help us to discuss it at next meeting. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the election of officers. Before you move on, yes, yes. Um, consideration for final vote. 
I'm sorry? That's going to be on the agenda to form a committee? To form a, um, well, it's it's kind of morphing as we as we speak. This was, or this now it sounds as though what it, what we'll be discussing will be um, an independent observer establishing an independent observer team. Hmm. I guess that's the best way to to word it, which could still include some of the same discussion, uh, especially if there are ideas that would involve campuses. We, we didn't. Um, well, you, and you might want to tie it in with your, the other thing we added last year is this, you know, immediate response. A rapid response, yeah. yeah. Because obviously, when this things happen, you know, can't they, wait for the next meeting. Exactly. And that was my concern, I was just looking at the calendar, and if the projected discourse coming up in November, October, Oh, yeah. Calendar isn't always in our favor. <laughs> That's for sure. All right. Well, if there's no uh, objection, we'll go ahead and go to the next item on the agenda, which is the election of officers. Uh, we have some nominations. Uh, we can accept additional nominations if there are any from the floor. But uh, Ellen, if you'd go ahead and read the nominees as they stand at the moment. Nominations as they stand at the moment are Chair Vince Glover, and then Vice Chair is Jensen, Jane Jensen, and Treasurer is Aaron, um, and then Secretary is myself, Ellen Murphy. And that's the only, I didn't have any other um, nominations that accepted the role, but I'm happy. Right. Well, we're having gone through this process for many, many times in the past. All I can say is thank you folks for stepping up and mm -hmm. taking the responsibilities that you want to have. It's greatly appreciated. Well, I, I think at this point, unless, the, unless there are unless there are any additional nominations, the chair would entertain a motion to accept the slate as presented by Ellen. So <laughs> any further discussion? All those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, the last item on the agenda is future agenda items. And I, I'm open to suggestions from the audience or from the commission as to uh, uh, items that they feel we should add to the agenda. I do have a, a question mark since our next meeting would normally fall on the 4th of July. Do we want to skip the July meeting? Why don't we have it on? Well, the yeah. courthouse will be closed for sure. Will it? Oh, yeah, yeah I'm sure it will yeah. be closed. So we have to either meet someplace else to change the date. Or... Well, if we change the date, we would have to find out when the planning commission is meeting as we coordinate with them. And uh, I'm willing to to make that outreach to them to find out what their substitute dates will be. Uh, you feel it would affect our attendance any more than it is? Um, well, I mean, I'll be there. No, that's so I'll be there. <laughs> okay, well, why don't we leave it at that? I'll, I'll contact Planning Commission find out what their schedule is for July, and I will communicate with all of you to find out uh, or if the date is acceptable. It'll probably be a Thursday also, but I just don't know which one. So, well, they, uh, their regular meeting for first and third, so. So it would probably be the third. Right. So tentatively. Is that it? Moon landing. 
Yeah, but tentatively, we were probably talking about July 18th. Well, that's what we'll shoot for and uh, make a decision based on what we find out. If they're not meeting at all during the month of July, then that answers our question. We, we won't meet. Okay. Any other items that we need to discuss this evening? Carol? I know. I was just a future um, agenda item. I yes. I mentioned getting hold of a person to come regarding the missing murder, missing murder indigenous people. And she's very difficult to <laughs> get a hold of. I've been trying. Yeah. Um, but I would still like to keep that on that agenda. Okay. Well, we will. We'll keep it on. We're tentatively shooting now for uh, Fernando Paz in August. Uh, if that doesn't happen and you make contact with this person, we could maybe make a switch there too. Her name's Danielle Vigo. What's the last name? V L V I G I N. Diane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm okay. And then it's detailed Nancy. Sounds familiar. All right. Any other business to come before the commission? See. All right. We'll call the meeting adjourned. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Do you feel?